Hi, so welcome to the first lesson of this uh, Creative Tap series, Tips and Tricks for After Effects. Now, um, first lesson that I'm going to be doing is looking at the After Effects system preferences and how we can make them best work for ourselves or you. So when you open After Effects, obviously you're going to get this uh, little new project window. It may look different depending on the version you're using. I'm in CC 2018, um, but anyway, just get rid of that. And we're going to we're not going to create any composition in this. As I said, I'm just going to go with the system preferences. So if you were to go to um, edit and then down to preferences and just click general and you'll be able to view all of these within the window. So just click general and then a window, excuse me, should pop up. So there you've got loads of different stuff in there. Now it's really important that we learn this stuff because it can really, really, really speed up your workflow. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, I'm not going to cover absolutely everything in here because it would be kind of a little bit ridiculous. Um, so the first thing I'm going to cover is the import. Now you can have a look, by all means, have a look through these and have a play around, but I'm just going to, as I said, cover the important ones. So first of all, import. Now, when you import an image sequence, which is a sequence of TIFFs or JPEGs as footage, by default, After Effects will import that and play it back at 30 frames per second. Now, given that I'm working in the UK, most of the stuff I work on is going to be 25 frames per second. So if ever I import footage as an image sequence, I don't want it to default to 30 frames per second. So I can qu simply click and type in 25. So whenever it imports an image sequence, it'll be importing it at 25 frames per second. Now, you may be worth working with loads of different frame rates, but if you're just working primarily with one specific, be that 24, 25, uh, 30, whatever, you can set this so image sequences will play back at this rate. Now, when you import footage files like .movs or .avis, they'll have a frame rate sort of built into them, and you can always change that with Inside After Effects, and I do show that in another uh, lesson further on. But this is how you can set that as a default, okay? Now, next one I'm going to look at is labels, which is down by here. So again, you can go through the output, these grids and guides, and have a look at that, but next one I'm going to cover is labels. So, <clears throat> Every type of layer in After Effects is a different colour. So compositions are sandstone, which if you find sandstone by here, they'll be that colour. Text layers are red, which is here, and so are solids. Solids come in as red as well. And that can sometimes be a bit confusing when they're both red, so a null object. So you can change that. You can change this colour red if, if you want to keep them all to red, but it's getting a bit boring. You can change it to maybe a darker red or lighter red, something like that. And so they'll all now be at this colour. Now when I'm working with a lot of text layers and solid layers, red does get a bit boring, so let's change solids to aqua, which is this colour by here. And you know, maybe I don't like that colour, so I'll just change it to a bit more of a vibrant colour like that. So you can come through here, change all of these still images, come in as lavender, maybe you don't like that. Maybe you just want to strengthen that colour so it looks a bit nicer. Up to you, but this, it, it does help me because I, have, I often work with null objects, solids, and text layers, and they're all reds, so it's nice to change them around. Um, so, yeah, that's just to kind of stop it kind of being a bit boring, same old repetitive colours. Um, maybe you want all your text layers to stand out, so uh, I'll change this to yellow and get this yellow, maybe make it a bit more bit more vibrant so maybe they stand out or maybe you want them to come in as black and there you go you can also change this to black okay there you go and your text layer is updated so that's that's just um, a nice little nice little trick to keep things fresh and you may want certain layers to stand out as well um, so the next one within here that we're going to look at is media and disk cache now this can definitely help if your After Effects is running slow Quite often, if your disk cache is full, um, <clears throat> After Effects will start giving you random weird errors. So my first thing to do is to empty this disk cache, okay? Now my disk cache is set to 22 gigabytes. If you've got a big hard drive, um, you can you can, you know, you can increase this size so you're dedicating more of your hard drive or your SSD, whatever you're working off, um, to work with After Effects. So maybe I want to set this to 30, for example. But I'm going to keep mine at 22 because I'm working off a small SSD. Um, I wouldn't go to I wouldn't go changing the folder location because it, it saves it in your temp for a reason. Now, um, you can come in here and also empty a disk cache. And do, are you sure you want to delete all the files? Twenty two gigabytes, 
from there. I'll click yes, so I'm going to empty mine. Now, what that does, when you preview your composition in After Effects, each frame, it saves a still image to your cache so it can play it back, okay? So let's say then you make a couple changes, but you do undo, you know, to see what you had before, and then you replay it. It's, that's why it saves those images. And it can just bog down your system, and, you know, you can also free up a lot of your hard drive here as well. So I regularly do that. There's a way to do it inside of After Effects. If we just come out, you can always go to Composition, or is it Edit? Yeah, Edit, Purge, and Purge All Memory. You can do that there as well. And it does the exact same thing. Anyway, back into Preferences. The next thing we're going to look at is um, Media Disk Cache we've looked at, Appearance. Now, let's just set up a little example. Uh, let's go to make a new composition, call it Comp1. Let's say I'm working, I've got a solid, which is, oh, come on, a solid. And the solid I'm working with, the background, is a dark grey. Let's just make it the same grey as this, but maybe a little bit darker. Okay, so now I've got a solid colour in here, and it looks very, very similar to my background grey, and that can get a little bit confusing. Okay, so what you can do is go to Edit, Preferences, and just click General again, or you could go down and click Appearance. Um, and you can modify the brightness of the interface. And so you can see if I brighten this all the way up, now my composition is a lot more it's a lot more easy to work with and yeah it's just a lot easier so um that that's i don't use that very often it's not often that i'm working with a composition which is full of dark grays but if you are you can do that and also the interactive controls like these blue bits by here you can change the brightness of that and you can see a little sample there okay and stuff like that cool but i'm just going to set all these to default and I like that, I like this sort of dark interface anyway. Now, final one we're going to look over. Um, again, you could go a lot more into these. There's two more actually I'm going to look into. One of them is auto save. So you can set After Effects to save every five minutes, which I've got mine to. And you can also click the box save when starting render queue. So just before you start to render, it's going to do a quick save in case it crashes on the render, okay? Um, now, something I'm going to change is these maximum project versions. You can up this to however many you want, okay? You can up, up it to like 999 is the limit, but I don't think you want that many. So I'm going to actually increase mine to 50 project versions. So it's going to save every five minutes. Um, you can change this to something like every two minutes if you wanted to, or you can change it up to every half an hour. I'm going to keep mine every five minutes because uh, I, I tend to work quite fast, and you know, within five minutes a lot of changes would have happened. <clears throat> So you can either set it to a custom location or next to wherever you save your project. So what I do, as soon as I create a new project, I save it. And so then it'll make a folder next to where I've saved it in my documents. And it'll just create a folder next to that with loads of temporary saves in there, okay? If you don't, if you have next to project clicked and you don't save it and you're working on it for five hours, then it's not going to know where to kind of save the custom, the uh, sort of backups. You can also pick a custom location. I always, so you can say, I always want my temporary ones to be saved uh, to documents, Adobe, After Effects, or whatever. Um, but I always do it next to project, so it creates a folder next to it. Quite handy. And final one is memory. So it says here the installed RAM I have on my computer is only eight gigabytes because I'm not working on my powerhouse computer at the moment. Um, so then you've got um, how much RAM would you like reserved for other applications? This is non-Adobe stuff, okay? And I can increase this and say I'm not going to be doing too much intensive stuff. So save two gigabytes of RAM for, I don't know, Spotify or Netflix or whatever I've got running in the background. And that'll decrease the amount of RAM available for After Effects. Now let's say you're not doing anything else but After Effects and you want to give it as much RAM as possible. Well, you can come down and the most it'll give you is, I don't know what percentage that'll be, 75%. Uh, because uh, obviously there are other applications running in the background, like Adobe Creative Cloud Manager, all that stuff. So it needs to reserve some of it for your actual computer to run. Um, but you can just come in here and dedicate how much you want to save and how much you want to give to these Adobe programs, okay? And it's only got After Effects lit up because I've got all the others installed, but that's the only one that's currently running, okay? So, um, Feel free to go through and have a look at the other stuff in here. Um, but to be honest, um, those are the kind of most important ones, I feel. Um, so yeah, definitely go through, do them, modify your system so that 
it works the best for you okay and remember always in the middle of a project i i do it if, if things start going slow you can go to edit purge all memory and i'll delete all the kind of cached memory okay so cheers for tuning in i'll see you in the next lesson we'll where we'll be looking at tips one to ten of how to speed up your workflow in after effects so cheers and i'll see you in the next lesson